Hello everyone and welcome to another DIY Engineers video. In this video I'll be going over the light dependent resistor or LDR. I'll also be going over the main circuit, the pins for the module, as well as graphs and curves and equations so you understand how this sensor works. Of course we'll be going an example of how to make a darkness sensor. So when you cover it with your hand or when you turn off the lights, that flash will turn on. So let's get started. Now the LDR can be used in two configurations. One is the simple standalone LDR in which all we have is the LDR with the two legs or the two terminals, which is no different than a resistor with the only difference that this resistor changes its value or resistance based on the amount of light hitting the LDR. We also have the module, which is what's shown on the right, which has the LDR component built in to a card or print a circuit board, which also has a resistor built into it and then the three pins for ease of use. Now, the three pins are signal or let's call it VP as voltage probe which is where we take our main value or reading. And then we have BCC and ground for us to provide the positive negative voltage to power the sensor. Now, here I'm showing some images so you can see the resistance across the LDR. So when we are applying a lot of light or some light, we'll see a, a relatively low value. But as we start to decrease that brightness, as we go, you see from left to right and then onto the next row, you can see how that resistance measure in the multimeter is increasing. We start about 10 kilo ohms and then we still have some light but it's slightly darker and we're still at 100 kilo ohms. If you were to completely shut down the lights it could go as high as a thousand kilo ohms. Now let's go over the circuit for the LDR. As we've shown before in the module we have the three pins signal which I'm going to choose to label VP because that's where we have let's, the so-called voltage probe. And then we have BCC and ground which is where we you know ground it and also VCC where we power it up. So here we can see that we have a resistor between VP and ground, and this is the LDR, this is the actual light dependent resistor, and we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor between the VP or signal and VCC. Now, in this case, if we do a simple equation to determine the voltage VP relative to ground, we find that the current flowing through the LDR multiplied by the actual resistance of the LDR will give us voltage VP. We can move the resistance to the other side of the equation and we get that the current flowing through it is equal to the VP voltage divided by the resistance of the LDR. Now, if we measure the voltage VCC relative to ground, we can also determine the equation equals, you know, the current flowing through both the 10K resistor and the LDR. We can rearrange this one as well, and we'll get VCC divided by the two resistances in the denominator, um, give us the same current. If we take these two, we can then set the left-hand side of both equations equal to each other. And then we can rearrange that to get that VP equals the resistance for the LDR divided by 10 kilo ohms plus the resistance of the LDR multiplied by whatever we put in VCC. Now the equation we obtain of VP versus LDR with VCC allows us to generate the chart shown in the bottom left of the screen. That chart shows VP plotted against the resistance of LDR. We can see that VP increases pretty rapidly with small changes at the beginning of our LDR. Specifically, we can see that we're only right around 50 kilo ohms and we're already past, you know, 4 volts meaning that the rest of the range from 50 kilo ohms all the way to you know a thousand kilo ohms it will be generate a value of vp somewhere between four and five volts this is pretty important to understand because if you remember from the pictures we showed before we were around 40 and it was still kind of not dark specifically and that what that means is that for that value we were already be near four volts uh, and anything darker than that will still be between 4 and 5, which is not necessarily helpful. So we can see here we had 44.9 kilo ohms, which means that our range between that point and, you know, full darkness will be anywhere between 4 and 5 volts, which doesn't let us, you know, doesn't allow us to do much from a signal analysis standpoint. What we would want is that when it's bright, we get a voltage that is much different than when it's dark. So what we need to do is modify the circuit to provide a smoother curve. And I'll show you how to do that in the example coming up next. 
In a previous video, I showed you how to use an NPN transistor to turn on a bright LED through the push of a button. I'll now show you how to do this with an LDR instead of a push button. Now if you recall, this is the circuit that we described for the LDR. Now to smoothen the curve and to implement the transistor that we talked about to turn on the flash, we got a transition to this circuit. Now why this circuit? Well number one, we're going to have the 12 volt source that we have here in the upper right to actually power the LED, which operates in a voltage range that requires somewhere between roughly 9 to 14 volts, as I talked in the previous video that I mentioned before. So we're going to go with 12 volts. Then we're going to have the NPN transistor, specifically the 2N2222, and then we're going to go to ground. So those are components we need, must have to turn the flash. Here we have the LDR, and then we're adding 220 kilo ohms. Also, we're changing the voltage supply to the LDR to 3.3, and I'll talk over about the reasons for doing that. So, let's look at this. Now, before we had this curve that was representative of the 5 volt source and no added resistance, by, by changing to 3.3 volts and adding the 220 kilo ohm res resistor, we totally smoothened this curve. You can see how now I can be at 200 kilo ohms and I'm not even at, you know, at 4 volts. It's totally different and it allows for a more gradual change of resistance, sorry, of voltage at VP. And it allows for a more gradual change of voltage VP as the resistance increases. Now, the transistor we're using has a base to emitter saturation voltage of 0 0.6 volts. This is the minimum voltage along with other conditions that are needed to activate the transistor and allow the current to flow between the collector to the emitter. Now this is key because we wouldn't want to activate this voltage too early. We see here that at barely any changes in resistance, the blue curve, which was the original one we talked about, would have activated. Whereas this one, it takes at least a little bit more. Not only that, adding this 220 kilo ohm resistance allows the current uh, flowing at all times to be less because of that added resistance and that current is partly also what gets amplified through the transistor so we get that double benefit of ensuring that the LED doesn't receive as much light until the voltage gets to higher values which is when there's less light going into the uh, LDR. So here's the circuit again and here you can see in this scenario we have the light off. Here we have for reference, the base, emitter, and collector of the transistor. So the light is off means the LDR is low, so meaning the specific resistance of the LDR, and that is because the light is off. This drives the voltage at BP to be low, which means the flash will be off. So here we can see the flash is on. That's because the lights are off and the LDR is low light. Since the LDR is low light, the LDR is at a high resistance value, which means VP is high, which means the light goes on. Because if VP is high, this gets activated. We're also going to get flow of current through here, which is going to amplify here, allowing the flash to turn on bright. Now, this is the breadboard diagram associated with the circuit we just reviewed. So we see we have the 3.3 volt power supply, the 12 volt power supply. We have the flash LED. We have the 2 and 2222 transistor, we have the 220 kilo ohm resistor, along with, of course, the LDR. So let's review each loop. So here we have the 12 volt power supply. We got here the positive terminal going to the LED, then that going through the transistor, exiting here and coming to ground. And then if we look at the 3.3 volt, we have here the positive terminal, which then comes here, here, then going through the 220 kilo ohm resistor, which then lands in the LDR, which of course internally has its own 10 kilo ohm resistor in the LDR itself. Then if we go to ground, this is the ground, which connects to this mutual ground, which is of course connected to this other ground, so we're all on the same ground. And then if we exit at the signal end, we will go through, or sorry, to the base of the transistor, as we talked before, which is what allows, this is, this is where B, VP comes out, and here we're entering and sending that signal, which allows these two other legs to flow current, which allows this LED to turn on. Now let's go ahead and move into testing. You can see if I place my hand over the LDR, the flash will turn on, and if I take it away, it will turn off. 
That's because I'm obviously casting a shadow on it and less light will be hidden the LDR. We can also test it by turning the light on and off. When I turn it off, the flash will turn on. When I turn it back on, the light will turn off. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the end of the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.